Okay, here we are, uh, back again. Gonna, my objective here is, of course, to get discovered on YouTube and pretty soon I'll be a Hollywood star, right? I mean, that's how this works. Yeah, maybe not. Um, this is EME 3214 Mechatronics, another example, just working through examples of different uh, things that we would need to do is for homework or for exams. So it'll help the students with, uh, with that. So let's slide down. This one's just going to be a paper and pencil exercise. I have our spring mass damper back again. That's every mechanical engineer's favorite, uh, favorite model, I'm sure. And I'm going to um, put this, take the equations of motion that I have right here, and we'll put them into state space form instead of a Laplace transform transfer function like we did last time. Now here I've done a couple things. Um, my I've used Z for the for the for the displacement instead of X because we're going to use X for states and this way I avoid using the same letters and confusion. I've already rearranged my equations of motion, my ordinary differential equation to solve for z double dot because that will be very convenient when we go to a state space. Um, so what is what is state space? Oh my gosh. Uh, it's just a way of writing equations of motion, a way of writing ordinary differential equations in a matrix form that is fairly compact and it's easy to solve using the laws of or the processes of matrix algebra. So the standard form is we have our state, the derivative of our state, x dot, our state is x, and there's typically a, an array or a vector of state equals some matrix A times the states themselves, x, plus some matrix B, times the inputs, which we'll call U, and our outputs, Y, it could be single, there could be several, often an array, equals another matrix D times our state, whatever our states are, plus, oops, that's not a D, that's a C. And this is D times our inputs. And that's the standard form. You'll see it, uh, you know, different textbooks, different areas. The ABCD matrix, just remember that. It's not that hard. Uh, standard way of doing it, you'll run into it from now until eternity if you ever do state space. So the first thing we need to pick, um, what are our states, right? Well, how many states do we need? We have two um, energy storage devices. We have a mass, which will store energy, and we have a spring, which will store energy. So we need two states, or we could look at it in our, our uh, equation, differential equation. We see we, we have two derivatives, or if we're going to go solve for z, we're going to have to integrate twice. So all those lead us to believe that we have two states. What I'm going to pick since I want states and derivatives of states, uh, and my only real variable here is, is z, sometimes the choice is not quite so obvious, I'm going to say that my state, that x1 equals z, x2 equals z dot, the derivative of z, okay? And the reason for that is quite simple. Um, it makes this all work out very easily. And then and we'll see in just a moment because now x1 dot, which which I'm going to need over over here, right, is equal to obviously um, z dot because x1 is equal to z, and that's also equal to x2. That will help us. And I can say that x2 dot equals z double dot, and those are all things that are in our equation of motion. I'm going to say my output here, y equals 
z, I want the position, which is equal to x1, and my input u equals some unknown f of t. Okay? So let's rewrite our equations just a little bit. And I'm sorry, they went off the top of the screen. But I'm going to say that x1 dot equals, well, I, I have that right here. It's equal to x2, right? But if I put that in the form of what that I'll need it for my matrix, I can say it's 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 0 times um, u, okay? And x2 dot, which is z double dot, equals, well, if I go back to my equation up here, let me just drag that down, 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 down. Drag it down here for reference. Okay, so I've got minus k over m times k over m times times z, and I got to go back to a pen here. Yeah, k over m times z, and z is our x1. So I've got minus k over m times x1 plus. Um, minus b over m times z dot, well, z dot is our x2 plus b over m x2, and then I have 1 over m times our input u, which is f of t, z, okay? So there is our equations in a nice convenient form, and I can write those now. Uh, I'll make x1, x2 just a, a vector, and I'll notate it by putting it in boldface type. x dot equals my A matrix is 0, 1, from 0, 1, minus k over m, and minus, it's a minus, I'm sorry minus b over m times our states, x1, x2, which I'll just write in boldface type as x, plus my b matrix, which is 0, 1 over m times u, and y, my array of outputs, equals um, 1, because it's going to be x1, 0, 0, 0, of times, and I guess I could have just writ written it as, I could have written it just like that, oops, 1, 0, just as a row matrix times x, gives me the same results either way, but if I'd wanted to have something as a function of, if I wanted my acceleration to be, or velocity to be an output to, I would have put second row in, plus zero times u. And that's it. It's now in state space form. This is, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. Um, there we have it. And uh, I'll end that there. I can put, well, I, of course, I can never shut up. I can put this in a uh, MATLAB as a state space block in Simulink, or I can create a transfer function using the state space command where I give it these matrices and things. But um, we don't need to do that now, and we'll just move on. So thank you, and thanks for watching, I guess, is a traditional YouTube thing. See you later.